everyone, and welcome to the Worldwide History of History. I'm James, and I'm gonna do kind of a normal video today. I'm kind of trying to redo my channel to do more kind of documentary type videos, so this one isn't gonna be any different. Now, I made this video because I just recently, today, got a box of stuff from one of my mom's co-workers who knows I love history and love old things and he also loves old things so he had a box that he happened to stumble upon uh, it's a bunch of stuff some is gold some is garbage I'm joking but um, some of this stuff is gonna go into my collection and some of this stuff I might just give to some kids um, there's a bunch of kids stuff in here arts and crafts stuff and the reason why is because this stuff is actually from a, a local store, like a general store or a five and dime. Now, back in the old days, I know I say this a lot, but back in the olden times, basically, there were a lot of small towns that had small mom and pop shop businesses. And a lot of times there would be things like, mini general stores and department stores and um, five and dimes. In fact, where I live, I live in this town called Quakertown. Uh, we have a uh, local five and dime, which if you're ever up this way, it's in PA. It's called, um, it's called Signs Five and Dime. It's a great place. I go there all the time. I know the people that work there. They're awesome people. They have a great selection of historical artifacts that actually are from the town. And it's a great, well-preserved example of how Five and Dimes used to look. And a lot of times they would have a lot of small items, um, cheap small toys and novelties uh, that kids could buy. And a lot of times they weren't really worth anything. But, you know, I'm talking about back then, but nowadays... Those little toys are pretty collectible um, from a novelty um, aspect. So, really, it's a neat little thing uh, to, to stumble upon. When I got this box, I noticed that this must be from some local general or department store. And the reason why is because a lot of this looked like inventory, uh, former inventory. There's a lot of... Um, bags, like uh, gift bags, um, novelties, uh, party favors, a lot of stuff like that. And it, a lot of this uh, stuff, I'm going to look through the box right now, so there's going to be a bit of noise, comes from a store called, um, I'm sorry about this, a store called Frank's. So, yeah. A lot of this stuff must have been inventory, and the store just decided to dump all this stuff uh, into some box and leave it for years, and then some guy dis discovered it, stumbled upon it. So I'm going to show you the box. I'm going to um, take a look through it, and I'm going to show what is trash and what is treasure. Now, I'm being a little bit harsh. When I mean trash, I mean basically just stuff I'm not interested in. If I could find any crafty people that would use any of this stuff, because there is a, a ton of this kind of, kind of stuff. There's a lot of treasures in here, too. I got a small little uh, bag of treasures, I guess you could say. And um, so we're going to take a look at that. Now, warning, the uh, video is going to have some sound issues, quality issues. I would love to find a way to address those issues. But re currently, I am not able to do that. Uh, so, also, there is some... My neighbor's kids are out, so they're going to be screaming a whole ton. So, let's begin this little video about Five and Dime Treasures. Okay, so, as I warned, the audio and visual quality is not going to be great. Again, I can't fix this problem, so... We're basically stuck with it, and um, trying to find a comfortable position to hold the camera. So let's take a look at the uh, box of stuff. Now, when you first look at it, it looks like a box of junk, and some of this stuff is. But you know, 
hey, there is some cool stuff in here. Um, I did separate the good stuff from the bad stuff, so, yes, I technically cheated, but I am pretty sure that most people have already got that when, from what I earlier said, that there is going to be some good stuff, and there is going to be some stuff that no one's really interested in. So, let's take a look. So, this first piece is my fantasy friend. That's what it's called. And it says, special boxes for special people. So it's probably a, it's a gift box, probably for a baby shower. So it's, like I said, from probably a baby shower. It's got a label on here which says it was, it costed $3.50 to, to buy one of these, which is a little bit, little bit on the high side, in my opinion. It says it's from Paper Boutique in Elkins Park. So that's uh, neat, I guess, but... The next piece is this. These are florist pins. I can imagine what they use these for, but I can't really explain it. I can't put it in the words. I recommend just looking it up because I have no idea how to explain it. Now, let's take a look at the next uh, thing. Now, there is another pack of these florist pins right here. And that's a full pack. They came in packs of four. And... Again, these are things that you would find in your local store, your local mom and pop shop. So, the next few things are these gift bags. These ones are probably from baby showers, because they got little teddy bears on them. There's a bunch of these. These look like they're from the 80s. Um, as you can see, there's a ton of these. And then the, there are some polka dot ones. These red and white polka dot ones. And those are probably for multiple uses. Here's another one of the blue ones. Sorry about the noise in the uh, background. Again, it the audio quality is not the best. So here we got these stickers. We got another gift box. Um, a Lego piece. This is an ashtray. It's unmarked. There is no maker's mark. It's neat, I guess. It's glass, so I gotta be careful of that. And there's another one. Again, unmarked. It's kind of dirty. I'm gonna have to wash my hands. Okay, look at this. Miss Piggy. Yeah. Okay. Next up uh, is this pack of um, arts and crafts little figures. I guess you could create your own person. We have these plastic chain things for necklaces, probably. As you can see, it says Franks. It's kind of hard to see, so I'll um, take a few pictures to cover this because it is really rough because my camera's not the best at taking videos, so sorry about that. Um, googly eyes. More googly eyes. Balloon things made in Korea, I believe. Um, let me take a look for a second. Yep, made in, oh no, Hong Kong and Franks. So, here's a button. These are little containers that you could stack on each other, I'm guessing. Western crafts. These are little heart beads. And they're made in China, so these aren't that, that old. More googly eyes. But these are the tiny variety. Sound like nerds. This little foil baggy thing. A little vial of gems. So there's a lot of arts and crafts kind of stuff, and I'm not really into that. Um, whoops, this box is not the greatest. Uh, so there's not really too much in here besides these little vials and this arts and crafts stuff. So I'm going to put all this back. Then I'm going to pull out the bag of the good stuff, or what I think is the good stuff. And that's just, again, um... My, uh, my idea of what I think is good. I love basically anything vintage, so that's just, you know, my thoughts. 
So that's why I think it's vintage, and I'm going to be right back and in a second. Okay, and like magic, here I am. I'm back, and we're going to take a look at the vintage stuff. The real good collectible stuff. If you're into preserving, you know, the old uh, retail aspect of, you know, history. I'm into a lot of things, and retail history is not shockingly one of my things, because... I basically have a wide variety of history I like to see be preserved. Um, so let's take a look. I'm going to actually take everything out and then I'll be right back again. Okay, so it looks like a disorganized mess and you'd be right. So the first thing is this. This is a tin that says, Ladies Home Journal. Now, this isn't really vintage. Basically, this is one of those tins that tries to give a throwback aspect to old uh, artwork that could still be in vogue, that could still be popular. Um, so a lot of times you'll see metal signs with reproductions of old advertising. That's basically the whole throwback retro thing, when something old becomes new again. And it's not really vintage, it's probably at the earliest from the 80s. But still something that I think I can find some use for. The uh, next thing is this little box of owl uh, stickers or labels or whatever. These are made in Switzerland, according to the case. And they're still kind of cool. I'll find a use for those. The next few things are these. These are little party favors from the 1960s. So what do I think is cool about things like these. There's also these magnets, super mighty magnets, powerful magnets. Um, well, these are things that you would find in, oh, and let me, can't forget these things. These are things that you would find in a five and dime. Now, as I previously mentioned, I, went, I know, um, People who own a five and dime, Science Five and Dime in Quaker Town, PA. And Science Five and Dime is a really great place. And they actually have, like I said, several displays of local historical artifacts. And they actually have on display some of the old novelty things that they once used to sell. And these are similar things that a lot of five and dimes in local stores would actually sell. Um, so it's pretty cool, these magnets, um, these little party favors that were meant to be for like a girl's birthday party or something like that. These are all from the 60s and they're really cool because they really show uh, how five and dimes used to be. Five and dimes are really an important piece of history, especially when it comes to local towns. Now, of course, you would also find Five and Dimes party bags. This one is actually vintage, which shocked me. This is from 1987. Never knew a party bag could be vintage. I mean, not shockingly. The next thing is this little toy beauty set. And this is from probably the mid to late 80s. At the earliest, I would say late 70s, but... This is probably from the, around the same time as Strawberry Shortcake. And it's got that same look that that character had back in the 1980s. So it's really cool. Um, this is a box of uh, seals that would be used to seal envelopes and letters. And these are things that you would lick and you would, you would fold them and stick them on envelopes or on letters. Um, you could fold them, stick them on the two halves of the letter, or just stick the whole thing on the back of the envelope. So, really cool. I have this Hulk pen from the 1970s. I mean, seriously, it says 1978. Uh, that's when it's copyright is from. And it still works, so I'll demonstrate that in a, in a bit. The next thing is this. This is really cool. Now, this is probably from the 1940s, and this is, um, whoops, it's upside down, so, this is from the 40s, and it's a chess set, volume 524, L, or no, ES Love. You open it up, 
and it's basically a mini portable compact version of chess. So inside this little drawer that's right here would be um, the little pieces made of plastic and you would stick them in these holes. I'm not going to take those out, the, uh, the little pieces out, because they're very small. The next thing is this old handle. Um, if anybody knows what this could have been used for, I mean, I have some idea what it might be used for, but I don't know exactly what it would be called. But it looks like it's from the 30s or 20s. So it's an old handle for something. The next thing is this toy, and I'm going to demonstrate it. See, it's a noisemaker, and these would be popular at parties. These were party toys, and they would be uh, seen a lot at New Year's. That's when these would be taken out. Um, just parties with your friends over. This was from, like, the 1950s, 1930s, 40s, around that time. The next thing is this small uh, bag of little buttons, and basically... These were made in West Germany, and that makes them vintage, because I could actually put these on display with several other products West Germany made, so those are pre-1980s. And the final thing is this. This is a token holder, a token and dime holder. This is from New York, um, and you can see a bunch of New York uh, tokens, subway tokens and bus tokens. This is actually from 1970. It's kind of hard to see the copyright because, again, audio quality and visual quality problems. But it's from 1970, and here it is, the actual token holder. The, uh, the final three things I'll just put all together. So we have these two things right here. This is a, a vintage toy... Uh, McDonald's Frisbee, or as they call it, a flyer, because they can't use Frisbee, because that is a trademark name. This mini abacus, don't think anyone's going to use this that much. And this is probably one of the earliest pieces. This is a mini uh, Reveille uh, quality paint can, or tin. There's no paint in here, nothing uh, that was in there is in here now so basically it's a really cool piece though the final thing is this this is a mexico thing that you would put on your shirt you would probably get this as a souvenir from mexico don't know what i'm gonna do with this but it's not really vintage but i could find something for it because guarantee i'm gonna do something stupid with it just as a joke but that's basically all these artifacts right here. So there are some neat vintage things I've found, antique and vintage things, that are going to be in my collection, that are going to permanently be in my collection. The rest of the stuff I'll donate to a thrift shop or something like that when thrift shops do open up. Because um, currently and hopefully everything's going to start opening up soon and it seems to be that it already is. So thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, have a great day. Stay safe and bye.